Hello YouTube, back in the next BattleBots review, and today I'm viewing BattleBots Season 1.0 Episode 2, featuring... Eh, I guess it wasn't the greatest episode, but it was only Episode 2 for the uh, first season on Comedy Central, so you can't really fault it entirely at this point. But it features, you know, I guess it's not the worst amount of fights you've had. I mean, Overkill vs. Frenzy was pretty dull from uh, Episode 1, so... But I mean, I guess the fights, you know they're not going to be that great, at least they're mercifully short. So, we got Voltark and Bender, which ends up going the distance, and Bender is not based on the Futurama character. It is based on, actually, it's a much longer name, it's Mixmaster Bender, son of Tatar, which because Eric Stolker's previous robot was Tatar, which did not pass safety inspection and was kind of running around uh, the pit area, as I recall, out of control, knocked over a table and whatnot. So, it was not really able to compete. It was at Las Vegas, 1999. That was before Bender was created. Bender's also based on the fact that it looked like a record player. And you can kind of see it if you look at the blade and take off the two teeth on it, at least from the earlier season. And later on, it gets kind of blurs away, goes away from that uh, looking like a record player there. I mean, after, I think, season 3.0 was the end of that blade. More than one, because, I mean, it uh, got uh, beaten hard by Omega-13 in an untelevised bout, although you see a little bit of it. Or pictures of it, showing one of the teeth came off. He really didn't have a chance in that fight. And it really didn't have much of a chance in uh, against Voltark, or aka Voltronic in this fight, because it, uh, a little caster at the back that was designed to tip the bot up. It was a two-wheel bot, so it, was, uh, it would tip up uh, about like this, and it would try to spin and use the blade to advantage that way. But Voltark is not a robot you can really hit, even with the... Uh, even with the... Uh, with the uh, angle of the blade, it was still, I think, still too high off the ground. It was, had a seemingly a decent amount of speed, at least for, uh... You probably could still count the uh, revolutions as, uh, you know, that's usually an indicator that's too slow to be effective, but... Bender, um, Bender you could probably arguably count even if it was a high rate of speed, because the two teeth stick out, like Moe's and one, they stick out rather well. But this was a dominant performance by Boltark. Just basically getting underneath, knocking the cast drop, I mean, bolt, which means Bender could literally could do nothing against it. Too high, it was high in ground clearance, and uh, the blade was too high, so, I mean, the blade, if anything, the blade should have been adjustable, or it should have had a wedge. I think even the fifth season, I think Bender still competes, it ends up actually kind of sort of trying to correct that, although even then, it still did not have the ability. It even came back in 2009 for the event, and did not, I don't know if it actually had any real success. I mean, heck, it wasn't even in the Season 2.0 Rumble at the end. It appeared, didn't go anywhere. Unknown reasons, we never really see it in any of its fights. It probably had to do with the fight it took part in, but it never got going. Either that, I don't know why they included it, but, you know, it was there. So, I mean, it had a nice idea. The blade seemed to be rather large, and I'm sure it was probably feared at the beginning until they realized it wasn't going anywhere. And then I'm sure it kind of kind of became a joke after that. But yeah, Eric Stoker, I don't think is even competing anymore. But you know, he was out nine. It was a dominant performance by Voltark or Voltronic. It was uh, kind of all over the place. Voltark really had an easy fight in that entire time. And sort of kill Hertz against Gnome 2. I think Gnome 2 was really a joke entry anyway, so... It was probably very cheaply put together, things were loosely in place, and, uh... Really, the first impact kind of killed the uh, Gnome 2. It was a shovel with, uh... Some sort of insulation for arms, and uh, it was really not that well designed at all. I think that's part of the point. Jerome Miles, who built Red Devil, was a lot more resilient. Just needs better, uh... You know, better control. I think I know he said inside the bot podcast that uh, he was uh, he was having trouble with the uh, design. I think it wasn't uh, it wasn't it was only able to go one way, so he couldn't uh, get out of it as easily as he would have wanted to. But it's at least a better robot. I mean, it's better than Gnome Two. I mean, Gnome Two was I literally I'd say literally a joke robot. I mean, it had a goofy little face on it that was ripped off almost immediately. I mean, even, uh, at least Jerome Miles is honest in the, uh, for the, in the pre-match interview. He's like, nope, not gonna win. He knew it. I think he knew a long time ago, even when he was building the machine, that he wasn't gonna win. And even anyone looking at it was like, no, nah, I don't think so. Not likely. Was like, unless those arms are really sturdy, he didn't gonna win a fight. And it lost to Gilhertz. Dominantly. It was pretty well dead almost out of the gates, but... 
you know, what can you expect? I think we all knew the outcome of that fight was going to go the way it was going to go. I mean, maybe expecting that slight off chance of a miracle where, I don't know, Gillard stops working, but that would be pretty unlikely, even given this pretty poor design of a robot. I think, is it this fight? or the, No, it's the next fight that, uh, yeah, Gillard versus Mahler, where things get a little, get a little, uh, you know, a little dicey there along the way, but that was, a, that was at least mercifully short. We knew that was going to happen. Unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot to go on. I mean, it wasn't a whole lot to destroy with uh, Gnome 2. It wasn't really held, well held on. So the chassis looked at least more sturdy than the top half of the robot, really. I mean, the whole arm, I think the whole upper half, like, swung away from the act where, they, where it had been at the start of the fight. It was not really... I mean, you know... It was a joke entry. I think that was a very common thing in the original BattleBots, so... Not really a surprise. I mean, you kind of know by looking at it, it's probably a joke entry, but... Let me go on to a probably much more... I don't know. Would you really call it more exciting? Maybe not. I mean, it was, it was definitely a closer fight. I mean, it was Minion versus Gray Matter. Improving the only... This is the reason why Minion... Didn't... I mean... Minion was arguably kind of lucky to get through this fight. I mean, it was 6-3, to three, as I recall, was the decision. Probably should have been 5-4, really, given based on the damage. I mean, arguably, one could argue that uh, Gray Matter won that fight, but I think its tires had been punctured, so it actually lost the mobility. So I don't remember exactly. I know Minion lost the saw. That was the big thing. And that's why in later fights, you see it was sort of a plastic chainsaw on the back is kind of a, a replacement weapon, sort of a joke weapon. Probably didn't have any other spares anyway. It was the same weapon, I believe, that uh, Missing Link used at the time. Didn't really get to get a whole lot of play, and it shattered. It completely shattered from what I understand. And, uh, obviously, if it didn't shatter, you could have easily put it right back on, and probably uh, we'd have gone, okay, maybe the, uh, the bolts came loose or something, but it was... Uh, Hard to say what actually happened and what caused that uh, the weapon to fail. It may have been bad from the uh, get-go, I mean, back at the manufacturer. But proved to be a you know kind of back and forth fight. I mean, once Gray Matter got got it uh, punctured the Lexan a minion. It was a uh, minion. I think I actually had a little more power to his weapon because Gray Matter was mostly off the ground. I think he had two wheels on the ground versus all six of minions. Minions actually a lot better. This minion was definitely a lot better than the Las Vegas 999 version, which uh, was crippled almost towards the end of the tournament. No weapons. Only had enough to fix drive. I mean, Glucky had redundancy, so I was able to drive at least well enough to uh, take home the decision. But it was uh, much better this time around. Low slung wedge. It's a lot more of what we expect. Unfortunately, it would have to do a good deal of uh, revisions to be good enough for the current tournament, although... I don't think it's going to happen this time around because we've obviously seen, if you've seen the uh, reboot of the show, then you'll know that he's not brought back Minion. I mean, Minion arguably could come back, but I think it would take, uh, you have to somehow make the design, I don't know if it would be acceptable, it would probably have to be, I don't think you could just bring in, like, you know, a flipper disguised as a wedge, you'd probably have to go more, uh, more intuitive than that, besides, we already have a flipper anyway, so I don't really know. Maybe Minion could be still six wheeled and have two uh, two flywheels, one on the front, one on the back. I don't know. Maybe that would work, but he went with overdrive, which hasn't really had a whole lot of success at the moment. I guess the first version was a little bit better, a little bit, but uh, it was, uh, you know. But it was probably, with a, I mean, if you had to pick a fight, that was probably relatively decent. It would probably be, I would say, Minion versus Grey Matter. It was at least a close fight. You kind of know, weren't sure which way it was going to go, unlike the first two, where you knew exactly where it was going to go. Especially in the opening seconds of Voltar versus Bender. I mean, we kind of knew that. I was like, oh, there goes the caster. He can't do anything. And uh, both, and Bender was flat. No angle, no nothing. Even the commentators knew that. At least Bill Dwyer was at least a little more, uh, he was a little more aware of what was going on because it was like, you know, you can't, uh, there's no way for it to actually attack because Ultronic is a low wedge with a little lifting arm inside it. It was a brilliant design. It was very solidly built until, uh, I guess, Moe heavily damaged it and ended up 
And that was in the fourth season. That's in the season uh, we did. That fight never got televised. I would love to have seen how that went. It's kind of surprising that didn't air because I'm sure, based on, unless it was like, I don't know. But either way, it was a uh, you know, you know Minion versus Grand Man was probably the most exciting of the fights that was offered here. Certainly an improvement over uh, Overkill versus Frenzy, but again, we don't know the circumstances. We don't know how many. I think we know how many bots competed. We just don't know how many fights they were. They actually had to look at. They probably had a lot more to look at than what we ended up getting. So the choices may have been rather slim, for all we know. But, you know, it wasn't a bad episode. I mean, probably about as good as last week's, which is good and bad. You know, depending on how you want to look at it. But you know, at least we got a close judge decision on like. Uh, then I guess Overkill versus Frenzy, you had no idea who won that one either, but it was really boring for the most part. And that's sad when an actual fight is boring and it's supposed to be meant to be robotic combat. Not the likes of, uh, you know, Robot Combat League, although that may have been exciting too. I never saw that, though I don't think that did well, given I don't think they've done anything since then, but... You know, yeah, that's my review on uh, BattleBots Season 1.0, Episode 2. Thanks for watching.